Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about resolution, printers, and the Anycubic Photon Mono 4. Yes, the, mo the Photon Mono 4. Not the Mono 4 Ultra, just the Mono 4. Uh, or the M4, if you want to call it that. Some people prefer to just refer to it as the M4. That's fine, too. Um, my discussion is not a review, as, as the thumbnail suggests. I'm not reviewing the machine. Um, I actually like it. It works just fine. It seems like it's going to be a nice little printer. It's going to work pretty well for me, for the needs that I have. Uh, it's going to make a nice addition to the farm uh, that we have. So I'm not disappointed with the purchase. I think my complaint about the printer is that I was underwhelmed with the quality, I guess, gap. I was expecting that didn't happen. Um, currently, I still use a lot of older machines. I have an X2, I have D2s, and I have Ultras, but I also still employ Mono 4Ks. They still function. Yeah, I know. They're four-year-old printers, and they still function. They shouldn't, but they do, because <laughs> they're workhorses. And this is one of those things that I will stress about so much some of the printers that are made by manufacturers work really well for a really long time and some just don't the newer ones i feel with all the new functionality the tilting bumping vat the weird hanging things for your resin uh build plate and you know the built-in pump and the built-in heater and the built-in this and the resin detection this and you know, there's a reason that a lot of professional grade machines don't have a lot of weird little bells and whistles like that. And they usually are just raw printing machines. The reason for that is because they're built to do that purpose really well. You should always buy your printer based on the fact that it does its job, which is a printer. Detecting resin in the vat and figuring out if something failed is your job. You're the engineer, you're the technician, you're the one working the machine. Don't rely on the machine for that. The one thing that I discovered and the reason why I do not employ machines that use resin detection is because it will often have false positive detections based on residue that is left on the bottom of the resin vats. And this can happen and develop over the course of only a couple of hours. So if you pull the res or if you if you pull the print, it sat there for a few hours dripping, you pulled it. You haven't run another print in a few hours. You're going to do your detection, and then it's going to go, oh, there's something on the bottom. There isn't. You're going to wind up wasting resin doing a vat clean to pull what? Residue off the bottom? That's silly. Those tools sound neat, but they're really just gimmicks to get people into the printer game who aren't necessarily into printing. So I haven't gotten into the pro or the ultra or the whatever, these these mega printers with these, like, I want to call them sports car uh, <laughs> titles because they started adding all this stuff. I might as well call them, like, sport or something on the end uh, because it's ridiculous. They're just marketing terms. I should know. I, I, I've done marketing half of my life. It's one of the things that I, I did and made a lot of, you know, my business was based on it for many, many years. Marketing techniques are amazing. You know, uh, a 4K, 8K television, your human eye really can't discern the difference between the two, but you'll still buy the 8K TV because they'll tell you it's better. Just like you're going to go out and buy an 8K printer because Frozen told you it was better than their 4K version. So you, you should get the, you know, the, eight, the, the mini 8K instead of the, the mini 4K because it's going to be way better. Now, in reality, if you had a mini 4K and you were still using it and you pumped some nice 8K or 14K resin into it and adjusted the settings accordingly, you'd probably pull a print that was close to what somebody was pulling with a 14K or 8K printer or 10K printer. The reason I believe this, and, and I'm going to show some some photo, some video here in a bit, um, and I'll, I'll go over what's what so you, you all can see and kind of judge for yourself as to what you think um and these prints were actually i did an unfair unfair test as well um the prints that were printed on the mono 4k were actually printed at 50 microns and the prints that were printed on the mono 4 were actually printed at 35 microns so i gave that printer a lower layer height 
to try to adjust quality, to even make it look better as much as possible. And honestly, I wasn't disappointed because the print looks great. There's nothing wrong with it. Everything came out fine. There's a couple of things that I'll discuss when we'll go over the video. Uh, but um, honestly, other than that, it's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a great printer. It works well. I will be testing out some 14K resin soon. I So far, I've only tested out 8K resin material on it, which is probably why I'm not getting the level of results that I was expecting. So part of this really might be on me, and I'm not blaming the machine. Like I said, it's a good machine. Um, I have not purchased any of any cubics, what they call texture resin. Um, and that supposedly is going to be the 14K resin that I want to use for anything pretty much above 8K. Um, and since the Mono 4 is a 10K printer, I definitely would like to try and use some of this and see if it will not only get me deeper detail, but allevi alleviate some of the issues that I don't like with what it's doing with the current DLP mixture that I'm using right now. Uh, it's not a game killer or anything. Like, you definitely can still use the parts. You just got to sand them down a little bit to remove um, some of the shininess. But there's this, like weird glossiness that's happening pretty much on all of the parts finish and it's the same resin i'm using on all the other printers and for some reason it's glossy on the mono 4 but it's not glossy on the other printer so again you'll see in the video when i show you and uh you know we'll we'll go over that uh in just a sec hang on let me get the video up for you all right we're gonna do this a little weird but um i figured this will this will be the best way to show you all. Um, now, this right here, the first thing I'm going to show you is something I probably printed a couple of years ago. Um, this is printed in like the standard, 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 standard resin, like 2K resin. As, as soon as I get it to focus. There we go. Um, he is like some mad mage things, like a. I think he's one of the Cripple God Foundry guys. Yeah, I think all these are, actually. Except for one of the last one I'll show is Gaz. This is from the Mono uh, 4. With the uh, DLP resin. The 8K resin. Now, it looks great. But you see how he's nice and shiny? He got this like weird sheen to him everywhere. I'll turn it over as well. You can see some of the details on the cape. And no, these things aren't damaged. Those are like weird eyeballs or something on his back. I don't know what that is. I'd have to look at the artwork to tell you. I mean, don't get me wrong. The new one is definitely cleaner than the standard one. But comparing this to like standard resin is like, that's comparing 8K to 2K. I mean, that's, yeah, definitely going to be better. Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> Details on the back there. Some lost details on the back. So definitely see, you see, I mean, there's there's massive difference. This is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of massive difference I'm expecting to see when I compare my Mono 4K printer. This also came off of the Mono 4. Don't mind some of the supports. It hasn't been completely cleaned up yet. But You see, again, it has that glossy. There's this glossiness to it. Everything seems laminated. It's a very strange thing. I have not seen this with the DLP resin before. Sometimes I really don't like to focus. There you go. Again, beautiful details, clean, good print, glossy. It's almost oily, and it's not that it's it's not sticky or anything. So it's if you guys are thinking maybe I didn't clean them properly, nope. They definitely sat in the alcohol same amount of time as everything else, and uh, I definitely cleaned off all the resin. They were. They were nice and dry. Let's see again. Shiny.
Yeah, and they they have not been fully cleaned up. So don't yell at me about support nubs. I haven't got I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, these are new. I just printed these. She came out really good. That's like an orc chieftain, chiefess. Again, with that glossiness. Nice texture, nice detail, but again, glossy. And to me, it doesn't make sense because here we have an 8K resin on a, on a 10K, 10K machine. And we're, we're getting this glossy texture kind of finish on it. And it's, you know, here, here's a direct comparison. This is um, the Battle Sister from Gaz Minis. The one on the left is the Mono 4K. That's right. That's a Mono 4K using 8K resin. The one on the right is the Mono 4 using the same resin, same exact material. Now, if I didn't tell you which one was printed on which, I'm pretty sure a lot of you might have had a problem telling me. And again, we have this glossiness. Now, it doesn't happen everywhere on her, but it happens in the places that have the biggest smooth open areas. Pretty much any large areas, large surfaces seem to laminate. Very strange thing. Now, I'm going to show you a couple other parts. We can compare those as well. These are the uh, swords. And again, we can tell the shiny one is the one that was off the Mono 4. And that's the one that's a slightly darker tone. I'll just switch them around and make it easier. So the one on the left is the Mono 4K. The one on the right is the Mono 4. And a couple more parts, and I'll show you. Ah, uh, the jetpack. Now, this one actually, to me, shows the most difference. Um, the one, uh, the lighter one seems fainter to me. It might just be the color, but it seems more faint. Either way, they're both fine. I'd be happy using either part. I did not do the pre-support work for this stuff. This actually, these come pre-supported. I forget who it is that does Gaz uh, Minis uh, pre-support. Face looks good on both. But again, we have this glossiness. Um... Now, again, I, I know that's not going to matter because once I throw primer on there, there won't be any uh, glossiness going on. It's going to be nice and matte. So it doesn't really matter. But if you are picky about what your materials look like when they print, this might bug you. Might bug the heck out of you. But she looks shiny. She looks shiny like she's actually sticky or wet. It's really weird. They're not, though. They're, the pieces are completely dry and totally handleable. I do not understand why <laughs> why the same resin on two different printers is producing a completely different finish. I um, believe we have one more part to look at, maybe two. No, it's the skull. Yeah, this thing. So, again... Uh, the one on the left is the 4K. The one on the right is the Mono 4. 
And for some reason, these just did not want to focus. There we go. Sort of. And you could see, like, you know, they they came out good. Both of them. Um, you tell me what you guys think in the comments. Does it really seem like a worthwhile thing or endeavor to really invest in these high, high end printers that boast like, you know, 10 K 4 K when, you know, when I can produce this on a 4 K printer, this right here, this piece is printed on a 4 K printer. That's using 8 K resins. So when you can do that, why would you bother doing anything else? I mean, that I think is the overall thing that we really need to question. So tell me what y'all think in the comments, folks, in conclusion. Do you guys think it's really worth sinking all this money into these expensive printers? Or do you think maybe it's worth the time we gave a try, like using higher-end resins on some of these lower-end machines? You might be surprised with some of the results you get. I know quite a few people in the circles that I talk to that already do this and it's one of the things that i've done for years and i'm probably going to regret giving that secret away but using higher quality resin than the printer even recommends often leads to much better results it's resin all it needs is a light source the accuracy level matters only if you're trying to push it down beyond the micron level that's recommended because of that it's just not accurate beyond that pixel level however that doesn't mean it's not going to work for example have I printed something below 35 microns on a printer that says you can't do that? Yeah. Did it print? Yeah. Was it good? Or was it worth me even waiting that much longer? No. The quality level isn't worth the extra time when you think about it. If you're weighing out, just waiting longer for something that just looks maybe a tiny bit better. But when my eyes don't really see the difference and most other people around me don't notice it either, and honestly, I don't think it's really worth it. But anyway, like I said, you guys share your thoughts on the matter. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get some hate on this one anyway, regardless. Thanks for watching, y'all. See you in the next one.